Apple and Google to integrate next. That's, that's humility. Focus is focus upon your core value proposition, store of value. Humility is accept the fact that Amazon, Facebook, Apple, and Google might have some asset that you don't have and accept their help. And then harmony is don't thumb your nose at the federal government or the tax authority or the regulators, right? You know, it, taxation is not theft, you know? <laughs> You, you know, at some point, you can say affectionately, tongue in cheek, inflation is theft. You might get away with that. I think you cross the line when you say taxation is theft, right? And I, th you know, and I think if we're going to live in harmony with the regulators and harmony with the government, then we have a chance to achieve the $250 trillion value proposition. If you're a crypto anarchist and you hate everything about the world, my advice to you would be make Bitcoin successful, make it worth $250 trillion, and your Bitcoins that you bought for a dollar will make you richer than Jeff Bezos. And when you have $200 billion of your own money, then you can go and found your own country <laughs> and you can be a crypto anarchist or go to Mars and declare you can do whatever you're going to do. But first, get the money. <laughs> mm -hmm. first be successful at the one thing you can be successful and I, and I think that that's that's the the lesson i learned uh there are a lot of people much more successful than me in business obviously right <laughs> amazon apple facebook google like it's not hard to figure out who they are they're on the front page right and uh and more power to them i think that um that my experience has just given me an appreciation for focus, humility, and harmony. And when you have a good thing, like, like don't screw it up. And if there's a, if there's a biological metaphor for you, it's a chambered Nautilus. If you look at a chambered Nautilus, it, it's, it's nature's solution to growth under pressure. It starts small, and then it wraps around itself. It builds a shell twice as big, twice as big again, twice as big. And geometrically, it creates this golden triangle or golden mean. Um, and it's, uh, it's always using its past assets as the superstructure, the foundation for its next expansion. And it grows 10,000 feet down, right? under pressure, underwater pressure. If you have massive pressure on you from all directions all the time, how should you grow? You should grow like a spiral out, right? Because you don't want to reach beyond your fingertips because you will be smashed or, or broken. And the chambered Nautilus is a, is a stable growth structure under pressure. And mm -hmm. I think we can learn a lot from that when we're thinking about how the industry evolves and how you evolve any particular business or, or product or service. I, I think that right now we're just in a situation where a lot of people still aren't focused. I mean, it, it's still not, they're still not really, there's so much noise and they've got so many other things on their plate that they haven't really focused upon this as an extraordinary engineering breakthrough that's going to change the course of humanity. I don't think that, I don't think that Paul Tudor Jones or Stanley Druckenmiller or Bill Miller are really focused on it based upon what they've said. They're uh, open to the idea of it ex existing, but it's still in a bucket of it's a it's a financial instrument or a hedge of some sort. But they don't really quite get it. They're not thinking that it's uh, a crypto energy reactor that's going to power a hundred trillion dollars worth of monetary energy. They're not even considering it. They haven't even considered it and dismissed it. See, like it's mm -hmm. not like we disagree. He, it hasn't. It, it just like out there is noise, and somehow we need to get people to focus. And I don't think they're going to start to focus until after you know Bitcoin crosses the all-time highs, and maybe maybe when it's double what it is right now, people may actually stop and give it ten hours or an hour or two hours. I, I'm quite sh one of the reasons that I'm an enthusiastic evangelist is I'm quite sure that the criticisms from Anoriel Rabini and Ray Dalio and anybody else of Bitcoin, I'm sure that they would reverse those criticisms if they stopped for an hour and watched, say, my video I did with Salt Talks with mm -hmm. uh, Anthony Scaramucci. 
because their criticisms are things like, well, it's a currency and it's not good for payments. I can't buy things with it, you know, and the government's going to ban it. And if they, if they understood it's not a currency, it's not a payment network. When you plug it into PayPal, PayPal becomes the payment network and their compliance rails solve all the compliance KYC AML issues. And now it's a store of value. And by the way, a store of value is appreciating 100% a year on average for the last 10 years. Bing, click. All right, well, so what was your criticism again? Oh, the government's going to ban it. You know, like, okay, really? Like the IRS legitimized it. The head of the SEC just said it was a piece of property. The head of the OCC said that banks can custody it. And a senator just said she's going to explain it to Congress. Tell me again what your concern is. No, they haven't really spent an hour. At least they, they haven't got the right information. So if I tweet, I'm not tweeting to convince anybody. I'm tweeting, hopefully, so that they'll click on that link and they'll listen an hour. And if they won't click on the link, maybe someone that works for them will watch the link. And by the way, it's like, if Ray Dalio never watches that, that video, well, there's 10,000 other people like Ray Dalio that compete with Ray Dalio. And so I don't got to convince Ray. <laughs> All I got to convince is anybody that competes with Ray in the world to spend an hour. And I believe that they spend an hour, then they're looking to go, oh, wow, there's $250 trillion of stuff that's fiat instruments that debasing at 10% a year. There's one thing that's accreting at 100% a year. It's a, it's a solution to the problem that seven and a half billion people have on the planet. Oh yeah, and by the way, it'll make us billions of dollars. So now it just comes down to a simple estimate of how much of it do I want to own? 1%, 5%, 10%, 50%, 100% of my portfolio. You, got, you know, it's like, it's that simple. They're, the problem is they're just not even thinking about it that way yet. And we need to get their attention. And that will come bit by bit. And we had $500 million worth of cash, which is an asset, which was also a liability. Mm -hmm. In essence, it, it couldn't be clearer than your shareholders look you in the face and say, we don't value the cash at anything. When you have outside shareholders look you in the face and say, we looked at your company, your cash is worthless. They're sending you a message. So we had to make a decision. The obvious decision is we either give it all back to the shareholders by buying our stock back and we leverage up the company and de and, com and, uh, and we uh, decapitalize or we invest it, we, we go buy another company or buy something that, they, that is more valuable than nothing or we buy some assets. So we had a challenge and uh, you know, if you have 10 million shares, you have 500 million, that's $50 a share. Well, when someone tells you that $50 a share is worth $0 a share, you got to do something. So what I did was work through this in a rational fashion. And ultimately, we concluded we couldn't buy another company with it. There's no way to diversify or there's no accretive acquisition to be had on the horizon. So we went out to the market and we issued a $250 million tender offer combined with a $250 million purchase of Bitcoin. And you know the story of Bitcoin. It's like I looked at everything else and, I, and after mm -hmm. I dismissed everything else, this is the only thing left. This is the moral hazard of shorting the dollar to leverage up the balance sheet. We found our way to Bitcoin because I thought it was the best thing for the customers. I thought it's the best thing for the employees. I thought it was the best thing for the shareholders. I thought it was the best thing for um, our vendors. And it's worked out so far, right?